Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another Python tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with how to validate a date using Python. So this is really simple date validation to help you ace this in your exam, basically. And what we're going to do is, we've got the user input, it's a string, it's some form of date, you can specify the format you're looking for. And we're going to print out if it's valid or not according to the format you've specified. So let's get right into it. Firstly, here's our inputs to represent what the user's going to enter. And a little disclaimer, this tutorial is not covering how to obtain user input, we are just going to cover how we can validate the user input. And then we've got our print statement, print validate input. So we're going to be printing the result of a validation check and we're gonna pass in input. So let's define our validate function. First thing we want to do, we want to do at the very top of our code from date time, import date time. We're going to be using the date time library for this validation, so make sure you import it. After that, we're going to do def validate input. So we are defining a function called validate, and we're going to have in, take in one parameter, and that's going to be called input. And then we're going to have a little uh, colon at the end. After that, we're going to do a try statement, followed by a colon, except value error, then a colon. So this is a try catch statement, where we try a bunch of code. If something goes wrong, as in an error occurs, instead of letting the program crash, we simply execute desired code, and then we can continue with the program before the crash occurred. So we try what's ever in under the try. If something goes wrong, we do the code what's in under the nice v accept part or for catch. So what we can actually do is we can try to pass our input to a date object. And if it fails, then the, instead of having the program crash, we can just return a false and be like, right, it failed to convert this string to a date object. It's not valid. But if it does work and no errors occur, then it's going to be valid because it worked. And that's the basics of what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to do date object equals date time dot strp time input. Then we're going to do a se sequence of characters percent %d slash percent %m slash percent %y. So this is going to be a lot to take in. So date object is our object. Datestime.strp time. That's going to be converting a string into a date format that we are comfortable with or that we actually want. Also, you can actually have time in here as well, but that's for a different tutorial. Input is the first parameter. This is the string we want to convert. And this is the format we want to try and convert to. Percent %d is the day of a month as a padded decimal number. So what that means is, it's like how you write, some of you might write a, the date down in your book. You might do day, month, year, and for the day you'll do 0, 1, or you'll do 10, you'll do 20. So if it's two digits, you just write for two digits, but if it's one digit, you put a 0 before the single digit, if that makes sense. The same for percent %m, it's exactly the same but for months, obviously you can only go up to 12. Then you've got percent %y, percent %y is uppercase y by the way, because there's a difference between uppercase y and lowercase y, is the year with century as a decimal number, which basically is a four digit number to represent the year you're in. For instance, you'll do 1999 as 1999, 2010 would be 2010 and so on. Obviously, if you do a lowercase y, you just have two digits to represent your year. There are many other things you can do for formatting this. Also, make sure you put a slash in between them, otherwise you can't have a slash in between your elements of a date. But there's going to be a link in the description below, and it's going to give you many more things you can do to customize your date. Like if you're in America, you might do percent %m slash percent %d slash percent uppercase y. 
and then you have your date in the American format. But right now we have the UK format. But there's a lot we can do with the formatting. Link in the description so you can customize this more. It contains all the little codes. You can put them together and be creative with your date formats. I'm making this sound more fun than it really is, I'm gonna be honest. But that's what was going on. And we do return true. In the accept value error, we do return false. Return true goes in the try because if everything goes to plan, return true because nothing went wrong, so it's valid. If something went wrong, then return false because it's invalid. And that's it for this tutorial, so we're going to try out the date. It's true. Because the 1st of the 5th of 2022 is a valid date. But we are going to try... The 32nd... Instead. And it's false. Why is it false? Well, you can't have 32 days in a month. Now let's try doing this the American way, but we want this to be the UK way. So we're going to go for the 29th of May 2022. But since this is the UK format, it's going to interpret that 29 as a month, which would be invalid. And as you can see, it's invalid. Now we're just going to put a single number for our year. And it's false, because we need to have more than one digit for the year. But anyway, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. If you want more validation tutorials, then be sure to subscribe and hit the eye up in the corner, as there's a playlist with other Python validation tutorials. Thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.